Hey guys, welcome back to this Flutter game development series where we are making Space Escape, a 2D top-down space shooter using the Flame Engine. In the last couple of videos, we added some nice power-ups and a power-up manager to this game. These power-ups get randomly placed in the game world and stay available for a limited amount of time for players to pick them up. So in this video, I'm going to add basic support for multiple enemy types. But before we get started with that, let's take a look at a bug that I recently found out. Steps to reproduce this bug are, start the game once, then exit to main menu and start the game again. Once we do this, as soon as the power-up manager tries to create a new power-up, the game freezes. If we check the debug console, you can see that an exception was thrown here which reports nuke.png does not exist in flame's image cache. Same exception gets raised for all the other power-ups. And this happens exactly in the get sprite method. At first, I didn't understand what was going wrong. Because we have indeed written code to load these images in the onload method of space escape game class. But as the issue occurs only after restarting the game, I went to the onDetach method of flame's game class. And there, at the very end, I found this images.clear cache call. This means Every time our game is removed from the widget tree, all the cached images are removed. And we have designed our onload method such that it executes the image loading code only once. This is why after restarting the game, all calls to images.fromCache fail. So to fix this, what I'll do is, I'll create sprites out of these images and store them as fields in PowerUp Manager class. Doing so will ensure that we have valid sprite objects across multiple restarts. So let's go to the powerupmanager.dart file. Here I'll create four static lit sprite fields, one for each powerup. I'm making this field static so that they can be accessed without any instance of powerup manager. Next, let's initialize these sprites in the onMount method of this class. I'm doing this in onMount because we need a reference to gameRef. And gameRef is made available to the components just before onMount is called. So using gameRef, we can get the required image from cache. Okay, now that we have all required sprite objects, let's go to powerup.dart file and start using them. So here in the getSprite method, instead of creating a new sprite every time for each powerup, I'll just return the corresponding static sprite object from powerup manager. And once we do this, let's hot restart the game. First, I'll start the game normally and wait till we get a power-up. This makes sure that changes we made haven't broken the existing features. Now let's exit to main menu and start the game again. And as you can see, power-ups are now getting generated correctly even after restart. So now that this issue is fixed, let's start adding multiple enemies. As you already know, we have this enemy manager class which is responsible for spawning enemies in the game world. And to create multiple types of enemy, this enemy manager will need some data for each enemy type. So to represent this data, I'll create a separate model class. So first, let's create a new file under models directory called enemydata.dart. This file will contain a simple class called enemydata. This class will hold important enemy details such as speed, sprite id, level, hmove and kill points. Here hmove indicates if the enemy can move horizontally and kill points indicate the number of points player will gain after destroying this enemy. And since none of these fields are going to change once initialized, let's mark all of them as final. Now I'll quickly add all these fields as required parameters to constructor of this class. Now back in enemy manager, at the very end, I'll create a static const list of enemy data called enemy data list. And as this list is constant, I'll make the constructor of enemy data constant as well. Next, to save some time, I'll copy over the enemy data list from my dev branch of this project. This list contains 16 elements with different inputs. If you want, you can come up with your own list or you can copy this list from the github repository of this project. Ok, so now that we have this list, let's go to the spawn enemy method and start using it. So here, you can see that we create a new enemy object 
with some inputs. But now this enemy class will also have to accept an object of enemy data. So let's go to the enemy.dat file. Here I'll first add a final field of type enemy data. Next let's add it to the constructor. And while we are at it, I'll make all these fields required. Then inside the constructor, I'll set the speed of this enemy equal to enemy data dot speed. And similarly, in the callback function of this freeze timer, I'll reset speed to enemy data dot speed. Now back in spawn enemy method of enemy manager, we'll have to provide an enemy data for creating this enemy object. And to generate a random enemy, we'll have to provide enemy data randomly. So to pick a random enemy data from the enemy data list, I'll use element at method on this list. And as input to this method, I'll pass in random.nextint with max value as enemy data list dot length. I'll store the return value in a variable called enemy data and then I'll pass it as input to this enemy constructor. Also, instead of having a hard coded sprite ID to this get sprite by ID call, we can use enemy data dot sprite ID so that we get different enemy sprites for each enemy. Now let's build and test this code. Ok, and as you can see, now we are getting different types of enemy with different speeds in this game. So it seems that the code is working fine. One thing to note here is that, the way I am selecting random enemy does not take player's progress into account. Most probably, I'll take care of this in the next video. But for now, let's make use of the edge move flag from enemy data and add some horizontal movement to the enemies. So let's go to the enemy.dart file. So here, in the update method, you can see that to update the position of current enemy, we use a hard coded downward direction, speed and delta time. And to allow horizontal movement, all we have to do is change this hard coded direction vector. So I'll cut this vector and add it as a field to this class. And in the update method, now we can use this new field for position calculations. Next, in the constructor of this class, we can check if enemy data dot h move is true or not. If it is true, all we have to do is change the default move direction from downwards to a vector with some angle. But we cannot have a completely random vector because we still want the enemy to travel in a general downwards direction. We have already done something similar for the thruster particles of player component. I'll just copy part of that code from get random vector of player class and use it to create a new method called get random direction in enemy class. And since we only need a direction, I'll return a normalized vector from here. And now in the constructor, we can call get random direction to change the move direction if h move is true. Okay, so this change will make some of the enemies move diagonally. But while doing so, some enemies might go out of the screen from left or right. And I don't want that. Instead, in such cases, I would like them to change the direction such that they stay on the screen. So to make this happen, let's go to the update method of this class. Here, we already have a check to remove enemies if they go beyond bottom of the screen. If this is not the case, I'll just add a new else if check to detect if x coordinate of enemy is either outside left or right side of the screen. And notice that instead of directly using 0 and game size.x as the two extremes, I have also used half width of enemy component. This had to be done because this dot position represents the position of anchor point. So if this condition is true, all we have to do is reverse the x component of move direction. This can be easily done by multiplying it by a negative one. And that is it. Now just for testing purpose, I'll hard code the enemy data dot h move check in constructor to true so that all the enemies get random direction. So if I do a hot restart now and start the game, you can see that every enemy is moving in a random direction and they change directions when they reach left or right side of the screen. And now we can revert back this hard coded if check. So that was all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. 
If you did, do hit that like button and maybe consider subscribing for more such content. I hope to see you in the next one.